Hey guys, Alani here. Welcome to another COVID conversation from Praying Christian Women's podcast. And Jamie, how's stuff going? Good. I was just uh, coughing, hacking and coughing a little, but it's a like dusting and cleaning from construction cough, not the coronavirus cough. Yeah. <laughs> How about you guys? We're doing pretty good. My husband's home already for the afternoon. He was just at his office for a couple hours. Um, our, our two boys have had fun. Did you know that they were doing some, I don't know what they were doing. They were doing some kind of iPad game, but they were able to like do it with a video chat together. So that was pretty cute. I saw that. Yeah. Cause they had the messenger for kids that we, that mm -hmm. you had told mm -hmm. me to get. And yeah, that's pretty cool. That was fun that they were able to do that. It was. So, I'm, I'm, oh, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. I was also looking, so he wants to find a way to like watch TV shows with his friends. Um, like there's this dinosaur dinosaur show and he's like, I should invite so-and-so and so-and-so and we could watch it together and then just like talk about it while we're watching. And then there's this fun Netflix, like choose your own adventure yes. kind of thing. Have your My kids, kids gotten into that? I love that. Yeah. Okay. Like survivor guy. Yeah. Like, we just discovered mm -hmm. it today. So maybe we could try to find a way that like, they could like watch it together, even like on ready, Zoom or something. Set. Go. Well, well, no, like if, if one, if we signed in on somebody's computer and put it onto Zoom and then they oh, could chat yeah. and I see the screen. Could, yeah. See, I'm so technologically, I had no idea anything like, I mean, of course I've. Let's try it. Yeah. We'll yeah. try it. I think it'll work. That would be neat. It would be That's neat. cool. Well, speaking of technology, we were talking before the other day about competing with our kids for technology, well, for computer like space. Bandwidth, and, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, like with you, well, not even bandwidth at this point, which I guess that's part of it too, but just devices because right. like for you, you've mm -hmm. got your kids home, homeschooling, mm -hmm. but now your husband is coming home more and he's got things that he's doing on the computer. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. And we've been on every day. So it's right. like, you know, we've been, we've been recording every day. So it's funny. I just had to adjust my camera from here oh where here. one of the kids was that's cute oh <laughs> both both of the little ones now both yeah, of the younger yeah. ones are um hang on now let me readjust now you ruined your camera yeah but both of the younger ones have their classes so the older one the middle one that had been all last week and this week his teacher had been logging on and they used to have these morning meetings which mm -hmm. was really fun they would just ha play a game introduce themselves um like what they've done, you know, what, what's going on with them mm -hmm. that day, just a check-in. And then um, she's transitioned that to Zoom afternoon meetings. So they've been logging on at two o'clock every day and not every kid can do it, but it's been mm -hmm. between like five and 10 kids usually. Uh -huh. And today I was listening in and she was reading them a story and then l asking questions about like context and like, um, what do you call it? Uh, like theme, like theme and all the comprehension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were chiming in one by one and they That's were cool. really excited. It was fun. And then there was my kindergartner who is in Japanese immersion. So they, <clears throat> this was not teacher led, but it was a few of us parents in a Facebook group said, Hey, you know, some of our kids were doing zoom. Let's just let the kids jump on. Oh, uh-huh. There were, it was all of the classes. So they have three different kindergarten immersion classes with like mm -hmm. maybe 18 or 20 kids. So close to 60 kids when all is said and mm -hmm. done, all of them invited to this meeting. I want to say there were 20 that showed up. Wow. So in Zoom, there were like all these little, little boxes. It was like the Brady Bunch right. on crack. Yeah, right. And did they like talk in Japanese? Was it to continue okay. with that? It was, the idea was that they would practice their Japanese, but at okay. first they were so excited to see each other. They're just talking Aww. in English and the conversations were priceless. It was like, uh, that one of the kids asked, so what have you been doing on this really long weekend? Aww. And like he was, and his mom was kind of laughing about it, you know, chuckling. And so they're saying what they're doing. And one of them, Eva, I think Eva was like, I didn't even know this existed. I'm Aww. so happy we can do this. So it was just cute to hear That's them. That's really cute. But the funny thing is, so my daughter, our daughter is very, let's say she's a leader. I, I don't mm -hmm. want to say 
bossy, but yes. Okay. A leader. And Uh it was so fun though. So, you know, those times when you see your kids just like coming into their own and like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. using the gifts that God has given them. For sure. The way, so she like saw another little girl that was holding up flashcards. And I mean, it was pandemonium. Like you couldn't, Yeah. everybody talking at once. So she was addressing that girl and they were matching their flashcards. Well, then a couple of minutes later, I went down and came back up. She's like teaching in the class. Like she has, oh, wow. she has her flashcards and she's speaking Japanese and like in Japanese asking, what is this? And then wow. they would say, you, she would hear the kids saying the answer and she'd go, That's Hi. really cool. And go to the next one. <laughs> Hi. Put it back. That's so it, awesome. It was really cute. And so I imagine like in the future, we parents will figure out a way to do the thing where you like mute some of the people, let a few people talk and, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but for today, it was so fun just to see that they yeah. were so happy to see each other. Ah, that's cute. It's almost like, you know, the dogs who are let out of the pound for the first time in a year, you know, just how excited they are. <laughs> that is what it felt like. Everybody Aww. talking at once. Ah, that's and sweet. One other cool teacher story. So I've been, I just think, I, I've loved seeing the silver linings in all of this. You know, there have been mm-hmm. so many silver mm-hmm. linings in how people are adapting in creative ways. And I saw on Facebook, I think it was actual, I don't think it was a shared thing. I think it was my cousin-in-law, my husband's cousin shared there in the Kansas City area. And there were teachers, there was like a, a motorcade of teachers mm-hmm. parade, like in their cars driving through all the neighborhoods with their windows down, beeping and waving so that they could see their students. Yeah, isn't that neat? And I don't know if they advertised that they were going to do that or not, but I just think stuff like that is just really kind of fun. It is fun. It's fun seeing the creative ways that people are doing things. I had this fun idea, like if we had, which we don't, but if we had like an ice cream truck and a surplus of toilet paper, you know, you could just like run through the neighborhoods, handing out rolls. (laughs) It's the toilet paper truck. (laughs) That would be pretty cool. Oh, funny. So how, um, how are you just taking care of yourself and staying sane? I would say I'm just now, I've, I'm just now coming to the realization that for myself and for my kids, this, we need structure Mm -hmm. and a little, you know, and we're, I'm not putting too much pressure. You know, I'm, I, I tend to like self-deprecate and like, you know, be hard on myself. Like, Oh, you loser. Mm -hmm. You didn't set up these things earlier, but I'm not being Mm -hmm. like that. I'm very much like, you know what, this is, this is what it is. We had construction going on. We're trying to assemble our house back together again. But today was kind of a cool day of not perfect structure, but Mm -hmm. some semblance of, okay, kids, here's some chores we can work on together. And here, this is like, let's, let's set aside this time for music practice and let's do this. And then my, my two other kids, uh, my two younger kids have their little computer time to like Mm -hmm. an hour apart. So they Mm -hmm. knew they were doing that. And my older son was doing some other stuff. So it was, it was nice. And I think as we go on, I think self-care is going to involve a little more structure so that it's not so much like everybody always needing something. Mm-hmm. Always. No, I totally get it. Yeah. So if they yeah. know what they're supposed to do, then mm-hmm. we can run a little more automatedly, if that's a word. I think that's a great word. Yeah. yeah. Similarly, we're just now getting back into kind of a homeschool routine. Yeah. And even so, we're not going back full throttle yet. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, I think it's just really important right now to be gentle with yourselves, gentle with your family, appreciate time together. Even my, my 14 year old is like voluntarily playing some card games with us. And usually like I, it's gotten to where I just don't even ask him anymore if he wants to, because he never does. And I feel like that's so much more important right now than whether or not they do, you know, a social studies unit every single day or something like that. Well, and even the teachers are saying that, Mm -hmm. you know, even the teachers and our our superintendent um, had sent out something yesterday and basically was like, guys, school is, 
is all well and good, but right now don't stress yourselves out as parents that you need to mm -hmm. homeschool. We are going to provide you with things and resources, but take care of your families, take care of yourselves, get outside. Yeah, you know, that's really important. Learning into doing everyday life together. And, mm -hmm. you know, and like this morning, my daughter came into our room. Um, my husband had a work call downstairs and I had like gone and made coffee and came back up to wake her up. And she, and I was about to go downstairs to start breakfast. And she was like, do you think you could just sit here on the bed so we could talk? That's I, really cute. And I thought like, like in real life, when would I, ha and I shouldn't say that because this is real life in our previously overscheduled mm -hmm, life, mm -hmm. how, when would I ever, aside right. from the occasional weekend, but some weekends mm -hmm. there wasn't that even there's rush to hockey, rush to church, do this, do that. Mm -hmm. So when would I have had that opportunity? So it's really <clears throat> another part I think of self-care during this time is like looking for those unique opportunities, kind of like you were saying yesterday, will you look back on this time feeling as if you've taken advantage of it? So mm -hmm. maybe looking for those things that you're not going to be able to do once this is over. And, right. you know, you're, you're not going to be able to have those same kinds of moments. Um, my middle son was doing his Zoom meeting, and so he got to do it with his lizard. So that was really Oh, cool. how fun. I haven't showed you a picture yet, but our bearded dragon is so like enormously and unnaturally fat. Oh, like, oh, you have is a male that bad? and yeah. a female, don't you? Yeah, but it's the male. It's very clearly the male because he's like twice the size of our female, even though they're the same age. Well, but sometimes the females, I think, can be bigger at times. But I'm just wondering okay. if she could be, could she be pregnant? I don't know. I have no idea about it. But I don't know either. Like I don't know. When, when he's basking, like he turns his whole body into basically like a circle. That's how fat he is. He's as, you know, wide around as he is long. <laughs> it's goofy. I wanna, but. Can you, can I pause it and can you get him? Oh, <laughs> no, he's, he's really scratchy. Okay. And so you since yeah, we're washing, since we're washing our hands so often, like we're actually getting little like scratch rashes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not good. So never mind. Sorry. Don't yeah. But I have, so we have um, friends that have a bearded dragon that's a female that is unnaturally mm -hmm. fat, super fat. Interesting. Super okay. Fat, and not pregnant. So just so you right. know. But I yeah. just was curious if you have a male and a female, if it's possible this soon that, that she could be carrying babies. But yeah, I, I think know. the females can be bigger than the males sometimes. And, and you know, I don't, I don't know for sure, but you must feed her well. <laughs> I feed him exactly the same as the other, and literally, it's like twice the size. But maybe anyway. <laughs> just like we talked about, how female humans are geared That's up right. to protect against famine. Maybe storing up fat. Maybe bearded dragons are also. <laughs> it was really more even because we were con had the same concern you did yesterday when you said that you went to the. Um, pet store to get crickets since you weren't sure if they were going to be open and it was such a morbid thought but I was like wouldn't it be convenient if we could just like put them in the freezer to hibernate and bring them back out after the summer or something okay I have a story so when we went to Australia to visit my uncle and my, uh -huh. aunt, my aunt so my uncle my dad's brother is American but he married an Australian woman my uh -huh. aunt and they live in Brisbane. So we went to visit a few years back and we went to a zoo and bearded dragons are native to Australia. So at the zoo, they gave us this little, like they took some different um, animals that were native to Australia and like did talks on them. Mm -hmm. One of them was a bearded dragon and they brought it out and he was really small, like unnaturally small. And they said, this bearded dragon is of full grown bearded dragon, but he was stunted because a child apparently found him running around in the yard. And as mm -hmm. you know, is like a 10 year old, seven year old, I don't know, as young kids do, little boy wanted to keep him as a pet. So uh -huh. of course the logical thing to do is when you're done playing with him, put him in a shoebox and put him under your bed. Uh oh, so nice. he played with the bearded dragon. I don't know if he fed him. I, I don't know, oh, no. really. But this went on for almost a year until a neighbor kid told the boys, 
told his mom, uh-huh. oh, so-and-so has this lizard. And oh, the, funny. the mom mentioned it to the other mom. The mom's like, he doesn't have a lizard. And she said, well, my son says that he does. So she talked oh. to her son. Out comes the shoebox. Oh, so man. The mom took it to like a rescue place or a vet. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. It determined that this poor dragon had been like, you know how we have to give them some form of calcium, you know, right, right. The vitamin and vitamin D because they don't get that naturally. So, um, yeah, so it hadn't gotten calcium. It hadn't been exposed to sunlight. It had been basically brumating, which is like the reptile version of hibernating okay for that entire eight months or whatever it was. And it lived, it lived, but it had severe, um, Oh gosh, I want to say scurvy, but it's the other thing. Rickets, like, maybe, rickets. or yeah, rickets. Okay. Is, I think what you get from no no calcium, so it it had bone deformations. But oh, poor they thing. saved it, and it was pure, you know, totally healthy. But anyway, all of that to say, yeah, I guess now, not to keep going and going about bearded dragons, but when we moved uh-huh. here, our bearded dragon tried to brumate mm-hmm. when we moved to Alaska from Arizona. And I think it's because it could like sense the daylight difference, even though it had mm-hmm, a heat lamp. Mm-hmm, right. Yeah. I'm sure it does make a difference. It probably did. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. That was such a <laughs> dragons tangent. Are, dragons are cool. Dogs are cool. Kids are cool. Pandemic's not so cool, but we're working our way through it. Yes. We are, I guess, being in reminded by our kids and our bearded dragons and our dogs to smile every once in a while for sure yeah and just this idea like life really does go on you know it's not like the bearded dragons are gonna bromate on commands for our convenience Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know so um yeah how's um just like your husband's work is he 100 percent at home now he had to go in yesterday so he's at home whenever he can be but mm-hmm. they do actually have, because he works in the construction industry, they have they have state contracts for projects. Oh, right. So, I remember you saying that. Yeah. So they're considered essential. So he did have to go in yesterday for some time, things that he could not do from a home office. But we're trying to, right now, today, we've been working on optimizing our home office situation so that he mm-hmm. can work, the Good. Can work, and, you know we can have several stations available for people that need it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, That's important for sure. It's been really cute seeing there was a compilation of clips from some of the like late night shows and things like that, where they're still videoing, but they're doing it just kind of like what you and I are doing. Like there's no fancy anything. It's just, you know, the person in their house and I forget who it was, but one of the comedians is like right in the middle of his spiel, like his daughter came in and just climbed on his lap. And Aww. it's, it's kind of cute just to realize like, okay, we're, you know, we're all in the same boat. There's not anybody who's, um, you know, not kind of going through pretty, you know, I mean, I guess it's similar depending on your situation, but do you know what I mean? Like we're all experiencing this, which makes it really different than anything that I can think of having gone through before. No, I mean, I just, I think there, there have been similarities to the earthquake that we had a couple years back or a year and a half ago um, in terms of the feelings of, wow, this is crazy and everything Mm -hmm, is different and mm -hmm. uncertainty and things like that. But with this, you know, I think about, like you said, everybody's going through it. Everybody yeah. across the world. I checked in with my, my uncle in Australia and, you mm-hmm. know, they're going through it too, to a certain degree. They're mm-hmm. kind of behind us. They, they don't have as, okay. but, but they're just now starting to have some of the, you know, like closing down things and yeah. telling people to stay home because it's starting to kind of ramp up there too. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's everywhere. People are experiencing it, which. All right. So you know, I've got a question for you. Yes. We we're not into quarantine shaming and we're not into getting political, but I need to I need to talk through something. So have you read the stories about this pastor who's continuing to hold like services with hundreds of people? Mm-mm. I heard about it, but I haven't read okay. the story itself. I heard of it. So like 
two weekends ago, he did this and, you know, it was kind of like, I know, no, you shouldn't do this. And then this past week did the same thing. You want me to just keep going? Yes, sorry about that. Uh, speaking of kids coming into the room, my daughter just yeah, came right. into the room, but yeah, go ahead. So keep continue your story. Yeah, well, I, you know, I was just, okay. He had some interesting points in that, well, if people are still allowed to go to Walmart, why shouldn't we have them here? He did take his services outside. So it's in a tent. I don't know if, you know, I, a church that big, I can't really understand with that many people how they could have done the like six feet apart kind of thing. Um, I want to know your opinion. Okay. So first I would want to see what it looks like. I would want to see of the setup. The setup. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think, I guess if you're outside, I, you know, I guess there are ways, but where is this guy? Where, what are the somewhere? I think it's in Baton Rouge or yeah. thereabouts. I mean, my off the cuff is the whole point of, you know, they're e at least here. And I, I think pretty much everywhere they're saying you can go to the store, but don't linger. I mean, they literally said that for mm. us here, you know, cause yesterday mm -hmm. I was talking about some of the you know, um, lack of clarity, but they've, right. they've since really sort of, you know, made it more specific. Down. Yeah. And one of the mm -hmm. things they said was you can go to the store, but don't linger, just go to the store, okay. get what you need and leave. So my, my question, I think that if it were me, I absolutely wouldn't meet and encourage mm -hmm. all of those people to be there together. If we're talking hundreds of people in a tent, I think that's, probably terrible in terms of mm -hmm. germ spread and even if you're six right. feet apart if you're presumably singing which I'm guessing mm -hmm. they would do right. I don't know all the facts but if they're singing I mean I was just talking to my son and he was probably three feet away from me this morning sitting mm -hmm. in a chair and I was sitting near him and the sunlight was coming in just right and he was talking and I could see the spit coming out of his mouth like oh, that's just, weird. Just talking, you know, like yeah. a couple of times, not all the time, but I could just see yeah, yeah. every once in a while. I could just mm -hmm. see as he was talking, saliva come right, out of your right. mouth without you. Okay, not to be gross, but. No, but I mean, that's part of, yeah. So if you have people singing, if you have people, if they're talking to each other, I think it, to me, that seems highly irresponsible. That's probably the word I would use to. To lead them and encourage them. Um particularly because now I don't want to comment on this because I don't know it for sure, but is, is he saying that he believes that they're protected from the virus? That did not come up, which okay. I was glad. So if, if that is his belief, that did not seem to come across in what I read. What yeah. it seems more so that he's taking the kind of like religious persecution standpoint saying right. like, you cannot prevent us from meeting which I guess, according to my husband, like, no, there's no constitutional authority for the government. You know, I mean, we have the right to assemble. That's guaranteed right there. But I don't know. It's uh, definitely not the choice I would have made. And maybe we just need to leave it at that. Well, and I think in the spirit of what the Bible tells us, yeah, we have rights. Everything is permissible, but not all things are beneficial. I think right, you're going right. to go to scripture and look for wisdom for something like this, because I do believe that most states are, and, and I mean, the United States government, the CDC or whatever has issued, and mm -hmm. I, think, I think the president issued the, please avoid congregating in groups of more than 10. Yeah. To me, that totally falls under that. So you are yeah. completely ignoring that so i think that's highly irresponsible again though like i mean maybe the way he has it set up is really responsible but it could be yeah you know I, I i'd be interested to see but it just seems like maybe this person is like pushing a, a an issue of pride over the well-being of the congregation, maybe. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. the well-being of the congregation, maybe. I don't, I don't know what he believes. What would make me angry, like livid, mad, 
is if he was preaching that as long as we're coming together to worship God, he's going to protect mm -hmm. us. Yes, that I is agree. False, and God never guaranteed mm -hmm. that. And I, there are, I was shocked and, and appalled at hearing that early on there were people and still are. I mean, I, I'm not going to name the name because I don't want to ostracize anyone. If But there was a person that whose name probably would be known to a lot of people. Oh, I think I know what you're talking that about. It was selling some kind yeah. of tincture. Tonic or something. Tonic. Yeah, like a holy anointing protection. That is, I don't even have a word for it. Yeah. I don't even have a word for it because I can't mm -hmm. believe that he believes, maybe he does. I, I can't believe that he believes that. You know, right. but maybe he does. And if he, if he does and he's trying to save people, that's great, but he's charging money for it. So, mm -hmm. and not just him, there've been other instances of people doing things like that to prey on people that are not aware of what's going on or, mm -hmm. or you know, mm -hmm. people that are susceptible to scams and things like that. And that just, that, that makes me so mad. <laughs> Yeah. Nope. I agree. Yeah. And um, I'm not saying this pastor doesn't fall into that category. I'm, I'm it doesn't not in seem any like way. it. No. Yep. So I would, I'm going to be, I'm interested. Maybe tomorrow we'll talk about the details because I'll yeah. look into it. We can both look at the details of the story if there are any to. Right. To no, it would be for. interesting to see their setup. You know, what I think would be hilarious is like a, a drive, um, drive in church service, you know, so you get like a big lot. And you like drive up. And so it's only like, you're only in the car with your family, but you're all kind of right there. So I saw a thing and I don't know if it's totally fake or if it was uh -huh. somewhat real, but it was a joke. It was like a, a meme. It was like a picture of the, of these people like driving in or like have, uh -huh. driven, you know, like in parking spaces and yeah. it said, welcome to such and such a church. Uh, welcome to our drive-in church service mm -hmm. and it said stuff like please and it had a few guidelines one ladies please don't leave your afghans in the parking spots to reserve them the night before uh. two please don't honk your amens using uh. your horn of your car and like it was stuff like that it was just yeah. kind of a laugh like it was just funny so, but I don't know, maybe that's a thing. Tell I us. think that could be kind of fun. Yeah. Like if you're listening and you know of a drive-in church service, that would be cool. It would probably have to be, well, it wouldn't have to be in a place where the weather's great. You could probably still, if you had your little. Well, you wouldn't want it radio. to be out in the cold for right. sure, you know, but we're moving on towards spring, which is good news. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. I think that would be fun. Drive-in church service. I think so too. Well, what would be a good prayer focus today? I don't know. Do you have anything, <laughs> anything kind of on your mind? I mean, one thing that I've been just thinking about is um, educators and teachers and students and parents, yeah. like kind of the, the whole because they're still trying to figure it out. They don't know oh, for what they're sure. going to do for sure. So, I mean, I've just been so impressed with our school district, with our teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought our, um, and I don't even know if we're, I don't even think we're necessarily in the same school district. So um, the um, superintendent of schools came on for our district and was talking about safety and like, gave her own advice. These are the precautions I use. I have to go mm. into work, but I use hand sanitizer mm -hmm. before doing this and just kind of taking yeah. us through her routine. I thought it was really good modeling. And then mm. she also, um, I've heard from multiple teachers what a great job the district has done providing them with electronic means to communicate with each other. Good. And like, they'll be the ones that have to be in the building or on the days where they did have to go in before it got really bad. Um, they had these video conferencing things set up. So each teacher was in his or her own room, but they oh, had uh -huh. video conferencing set up so that they could just click a button, even for people that weren't really technologically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. savvy, you know, they right. were able to connect with each other. So I don't know, just prayer for the school districts and teachers and mm -hmm. also the parents, you know, for being able, because I know a lot of parents that have never homeschooled are mm -hmm. kind of freaking out of what they're going to, you know, how yeah. am I going to give them the same 
classroom situation. And right. Or if they're trying to work from home in addition to having the kids home. And right. Or think about it if they are at home and they're not working and they are completely stressed about their job and, and whether, you know, they'll be mm -hmm. able to pay the mortgage. I mean, I feel like yeah. it's really hard to focus on anything when you have external stressors and there are lots For of them sure. right now. So there yeah. are. Yeah. So I don't know. You want to pray for that? A little bit of everything, kind of potpourri prayers. Yeah. Let's do it. Sounds good. God, we are thankful for the fact that we woke up healthy and the fact that our families are safe. We thank you that it is your sustaining hands that is keeping this globe from falling into absolute chaos, Lord. And we just look to you to continue to sustain us and bring us that healing, Lord. I do pray for the pastor of this church that we've been talking about and just ask mm -hmm. for absolute just love and wisdom and unity to reign. And we also pray for teachers and parents with kids at home. And just this whole situation is something we were so unprepared for. And there are so many people struggling and stressed. And so we just ask your grace to extend to everybody who needs it today, God, which we know is every single one of us, Lord. And God, we just continue to pray that you would keep our attitudes and our our hearts in check, that we would be just gracious and loving to our neighbors, um, that we would we would put others first in our actions and, and in our interactions, um, both in person and digitally. Um, and we do lift up our teachers right now and our superintendents and principals and everyone in between um, staff that are keeping the schools running. We just, we pray that you would be able to um, just infuse wisdom and creativity and energy into these teachers. They're dealing with their own stuff. Many of them have kids at home and they're trying to work from home. Um, we pray for the parents. We pray that they would also just be comforted and just give them a spirit of peace and a spirit of confidence in their abilities to maintain their households and and allow their kids um get their kids access to the education that they need to finish out this year well um and we pray for the students too god i'm just thankful for the encouragement that my kids are starting to see through seeing their their classmates and i just pray that kind of encouragement for um children all over that just little glimpses of normalcy would would start to emerge as we find new and creative ways to deal with this crisis um and god i just uh we just also pray for um um for our high school seniors god i just they have to be just going through a lot of emotions right now just finishing up their high school year in this kind of way just has to be so difficult for them. Lord, we raise them up to you. We lift them up to you and just pray that that you would um, support them and love them and just help them to, um, to receive um, just an outpouring of celebration for, for their coming to the end of their school time, that you would give people ways and just um, inspire people to, to celebrate the end of their school career in a way that would make them feel special and, um, and that just all of the logistics would be able to be worked out for them to get their credits before graduation and for those still figuring out where they're going to go and what they're going to do. Lord, we just pray that you'd open the way for them to get those things done and get those loose ends tied up. It's hard enough without all of this craziness going on to make that transition. I just can't even imagine what they're going through. So we just pray for them and for their parents and teachers and counselors that you would um, just raise them up, allow them to get this stuff done and just be glorified in it, Lord. I just, I know that we will see these glimpses. We'll just keep on seeing these glimpses of these silver linings that come out of this difficult time. And we just pray that over them and all of our teachers and parents and students. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thanks, Jamie. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to sign off real quick and get dinner going for the family. And we hope that you are all healthy and safe and doing well.